Hello and welcome to Scale Stuff. In this week's video, I'm going to be painting something a little different, a resin 3D printed Spinosaurus. Not sure what scale it's in, probably around one to 40 I'd guess, but lately I've seen a lot online about how resin printers are the future of modeling. And uh, yeah, I wanted to have a go at painting one. This model was printed for me by Mike's Menageries from Etsy. He seems like a top notch bloke, so I figured I'd give him a shout out. There's a link in the description below if you wanted to paint something paleo yourself. A first quick look around the model shows the detail is pretty good. It's not quite as crisp as some injection moulding I've seen, but it's certainly workable. And on an organic model such as this, panel lines and sharp edges will not be an issue. There's a little bit of cleanup needed, a few support marks on the tail of this dinosaur, and a few on the underbelly, along with some holes, which I'm sure are there for a reason that I don't understand. Nothing of sand and some green stuff won't fix though. Other than that, there's a tiny bit of flash on a few claws, but overall, the prep work looks pretty simple. So, first things first, clean up. Having not worked on this type of resin before, I'm going to practice on the base by removing some support marks from the rocks here, as a scuff rock is not an issue. The resin seems strange to cut into compared to the normal plastic I'm used to working with. I want to say it feels a bit chalky, but it's not loose or powdery and seems to take a clean cut okay though. Feeling a little braver, I moved on to the dinosaur starting at the tail. I remember now why the model feels chalky to cut. It's because it's been pre-primed and it's the paint I'm feeling under the knife more than the resin. The cleanup's going okay, but it's just a bit weird for me going around finding the, what's left of support posts rather than the normal flash and seam lines that I'm used to dealing with. It won't matter if I miss a few of these old support posts though, as they can just be passed off as big scales. So far, so good. This resin's handling a cleanup pretty well. I've lost the tip of a claw though, but that was on me. Next up, it's time to get those pesky holes filled in. For this, I'm just using some green stuff. I'm sure there has to be a reason for these holes. They seem strategic. I wonder if they're vents for air bubbles or something like that. Holes filled in, it's time to get a base coat down. For this I'm using Humbral Desert Tan and praying to all of the gods that the undercoat had fully dried before this model was posted to me as otherwise I might get a reaction. I'm going with the light tan colour as I think it's a good base shade for a lizard. Base coat on, it's time to give the dinosaur a bit of a two tone effect. For this I'm going to be using AK World War One Khaki Watered Down a bit. I want to give the Spinosaurus a sort of mud or sand camo. My thinking with using this colour scheme is, it's speculated that Spinosaurus lived in coastal shorelines, mangrove swamps and mud flats. Even though these dinosaurs were pretty big when they were fully grown, even the biggest dinosaurs would start out small and I imagine something would have tried to eat them so it would be a good idea for them to blend into their environment a bit. The plan here is to wash this mix over the whole model and with the model wet, build up the colours with more following layers. If I paint these following layers on while the underside is still damp, this should make the paint merge and not be too uniform. As scales and flesh are natural, I want to avoid any obvious brush strokes or colour contrasts, at least for now. Anyway, this is how it's looking so far. I'm going to leave this to dry so it's safe to handle for the next stage. Now I'm going to clean up the belly area a bit as I got a few runs in the previous step. For this I'm using skeleton bone and same as before watering down the paint but not as much as before as I want a bit more control to avoid a chase the clean up round and round in circles. Belly sorted out, I'm moving on to the sail. For this I'm using World War One khaki but darkening it down with black. My thinking is the sail would be above the water to allow the Spinosaurus to absorb more heat while its lower half was in the cold water for most of the day. In my mind darker colours absorb more heat so yeah I'm going to paint this area darker. Later I do want to put some vivid colours here though to represent some sort of display crest or breeding signal. 
This dinosaur's got a tiny crest on its head for no reason, so I imagine it had to be a little showy in some way. I'm painting the sail using the same method as before, slightly watered down to keep it natural and blotchy. Once I was happy with the coverage, I softened the seam line between the dark sail and the light body with a sponge. I tried to clean off some paint by dragging the sponge downward and uh, accidentally created a nice little uh, lateral line. So uh, yeah, decided to keep that. Sail base paint down, I moved on to darken the tail. In this area, I don't want to go overboard, just uh, blend in the tones. While I've got the darker paints out, I'm hitting a few creases and folds to give the shadows a bit more depth. This is how it's looking so far. I really enjoy painting the occasional organic model, dinosaurs especially, as uh, we don't really know what they look like. Another thing I think is nice with organic models is I find they kind of paint themselves, as you can have an idea in your head of what you want the model to look like, but often you just end up going with the paint. While the fin's drying up, I want to get the base started. By coating the base in sand, I'm using PVA glue to fix the sand. The sand's got slightly damp and is going on quite thick, but I quite like the effect, so I'm going to see if a watered down coat of PVA will hold this in place. This is probably going to take all weekend to dry. While that's drying, it's back to the dyno, giving the sail of the creature some display markings. I've been dreading doing this bit, as I want it vivid, but not fake looking. I'm starting off with some pure red, and same as on all the other bits, watering it down and applying it sparingly and building up coats. I always think these focal bits are the hardest part to do of any organic model, as you want a natural, bright, controlled look, but without it looking fake and neat. After a couple of red coats, I revisited the tops of the red markings with undiluted pure red in small dots, just to make this area pop a little bit. Now I'm adding some more details to the dinosaur. First, I'm coating the teeth and claws with skeleton bone and then highlighting them with insignia white. The teeth look fine, but the claws look too perfect, so I've given them a wash with a little black-brown mix before moving on to the eyes. The main eyes I'm painting in basilisk brown, followed up with a pure black pupil and a tiny, tiny dot of white to give it a bit of soul. I think at this stage, I'm going to leave the dinosaur so I don't overdo it. Now it's drier, it's back to painting the base. First thing I'm doing is a quick wash on the rocks. I'm just using a watered down black and brown paint mix here. Then I move on to the tree branch, washing this in a mix of World War I khaki and skeleton bone. I'm trying to get the exposed wood to have a clean look to it, where the bark has worn away, exposing the smooth start of the sapwood area underneath. While this is drying, I hit the sand with a coat of skeleton bone. I'm not 100% sure about this, and I might paint this up like it's mud or silt later on. Moving back onto the tree, I give the raised bark a dry brush of World War I khaki, and then lightly dab watered down Army Painter Elf Green all over the wood to represent algae, 
as someone who's cleaned out a pond before, if there's a bit of algae, there's a lot of algae. So uh, I also painted this over the stones before moving on to the sand base. On the base, I started getting carried away and just mixed up a bit of everything to hand in an old olive green Tamiya paint pot. I decided to make it look like a swampy base, so a mare of anything greeny brown will do. I think the base needs more detail for it to look like a swamp though, so I'm going to add some leaves. I brought a leaf cutting stamp some time ago, but I can't find it. I do have a bag of the leaves pre-done though. Rather than place them carefully in a very manufactured way, I'm literally going to chuck them at the uh, base and see what sticks. A light reshuffle later, and once I'm happy with the position, I go over the leaves with a coat of the greeny brown mess that I mixed up earlier, as again, algae tends to coat even leaf litter. After doing this, I decided the area needs to be a bit more brown, as uh, yeah, I think I got a bit carried away. And sunken leaves, yeah, they're not completely green. Finally, I revisited the leftover bits of bark with some World War I khaki to darken them down a bit more before hitting some of the recessed areas with a bit of watered down black to give the shadows here some more depth. I'm liking how the base is looking at this stage, but I feel it needs a little more interest before I can call it done. I'm going to try and make some pond or river weed. For this, I'm using green Ascari tissue cut into thin strips. With it cut into thin bits, I'll give it a twist to give it some organic movement before hitting it with a coat of hairspray to uh, hopefully hold it in a position. I think I was asking too much of the hairspray here, as at this length, there's no way I'm going to get it to stand up. After a bit of shortening, I add the pond weed to the base with some PVA glue and paint over the seam lines with the green mess I mixed up earlier. And with that done, it's just a simple case of painting the rim of the base black and giving the whole model a coat of semi-gloss varnish to make it look wet. And this is the finished dinosaur. I really enjoy painting this model Spinosaurus. It's been nice to paint on a new type of material and I can certainly see that 3D printed resin will have a future in the hobby. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully found it helpful, even if it's just to show you what not to do. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. We have at least monthly model videos on the channel, backed up for two years at this point. So uh, yeah, plenty more videos to come. Until next time though, look after yourself, keep painting and have a good one. Goodbye.